Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at the 20 greatest games ever made for the PlayStation Portable. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron and Star Wars Battlefront Elite Squadron. Here they come. Take them out. We know that these are two separate titles. We're merely putting them together because you could go with either game. Both Renegade and Elite Squadron boast excellent campaigns, the former focusing on events leading up to the Battle of Endor, while the latter tells a story about a clone trooper as he experiences the events of Revenge of the Sith all the way up to Return of the Jedi. These two campaigns alone gave us plenty of reasons to pick them both up. Of course, you can also spend countless hours playing Galactic Conquest. Speaking of, Elite Modified Conquest in a way where two players could fight against each other using the same PSP. You just don't see that level of innovation anymore. Ridge Racer 2! No, this was not a port of the PS1 game Ridge Racer 2. Namco's once thriving racing series did give the PSP its own small lineup of Ridge Racer titles. Surprisingly, Ridge Racer 2 came packing in a ton of options for players. Not only could you race on 21 brand new tracks, you could also visit tracks from the previous game and the games that came before that. You also had a meaty selection of more than 60 cars to race across those courses. In other words, racing game fans were getting a lot of bang for their buck with this one. Finish! First place! That was the best race ever! Assassin's Creed Bloodlines We won't lie, this is probably one of the weirdest games any AC fan could possibly play. Bloodlines removed some key mechanics, such as stealth and eagle vision, but the big reason to play Bloodlines is more in its technical fidelity. Considering the limitations of the PSP, it's kind of astounding how Ubisoft managed to develop a game of this size, between its world and visual details. We aren't saying this is an absolute must play and it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but if you want to see a game push to utilize every ounce of its power, Bloodlines is definitely one of those titles, for better or worse, depending on your expectations. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Give me a break, Aqua. Then, you hopeless sleepyhead. You know, you should have at least brought a blanket. Very rarely does a handheld game ever outshine its home console brethren, and in the case of Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep certainly achieved that. In a general sense, it managed to refine the controls to such a degree that simply jumping around felt great. As an evolution in the series, the new mechanics like Dimension Link and Focus worked surprisingly well in how they gave you new abilities to mess around with and defeat the Heartless with. Sure, the load times were less than tolerable, but spend just an hour with this and you'll want to keep playing. You finally found someone whom you wish to marry. Upon hearing that happy news, your father, the king, has decreed that a quest shall begin immediately throughout the kingdom. Soul Calibur Broken Destiny. Most people probably picked this up for the sole fact that Kratos was the token guest character for this installment. 
However, there was more to Broken Destiny than watching the Ghost of Sparta take on sexy ninja girls, goliaths with giant axes, and sentient cursed swords. <laughs> The Gauntlet campaign helped us hone in our skills in the game's mechanics, while the Trials modes challenged us in chaining attacks, effectively countering, and simply enduring consecutive fights. There was a lot of focus here on self-improvement and training to take on harder ladders and ready ourselves for any other players itching for a fight. It was like having your own personal dojo in your pocket. <laughs> Final Fantasy Tactics, The War of the Lions. Look, we know that this was just an altered version of the original Final Fantasy Tactics, but that shouldn't dismiss it from a list like this. Would you rather us champion Dissidia? War of the Lions actually managed to improve the game thanks to the technical advancements of the PSP. Cutscenes looked better with the handheld's aspect ratio, and we even got multiplayer functionality for both PvP and co-op game modes. It was essentially the version of Final Fantasy Tactics we had always wanted, and that goes without mentioning some of the new characters and jobs that were added into this version. Killzone Liberation. It could be hard to sell hardcore fans on a spinoff like Killzone Liberation. How do you expect FPS players to suddenly be open to a top-down shooter, especially when a handheld iteration would be less technically impressive than its home console counterpart? Well, developer Guerrilla Games found their own path in achieving that. Despite the different perspective, you still had to employ the cover shooter tactics of the main Killzone games and use the environment to your advantage. Liberation also featured a fun challenge mode that would earn you new stages as you progressed in the story, and beating those stages would let you unlock more weapons and modifiers to assist you in the main campaign. If you haven't checked it out on PS5 already, you absolutely should. Twisted Metal, head on. Every fan has their own favorite entry in the franchise, but if you were clamoring for a Twisted Metal that was more in line with TM2, you probably picked up head on. On top of bringing back the comic book aesthetic and its cutscenes and character profiles, Head On also got a little more arcadey in its general style, with hidden teleporters, vehicle upgrades, and more arena style level design. Even the soundtrack had some great songs that sounded solid through the PSP speakers. We gotta be honest though, the PS2 users got a better version that came with a bunch of extra goodies. Still, Head On's initial release is still a banger. Tekken 5, Dark Resurrection. Fight. Tekken 5 was already an incredible title for PlayStation 2 owners to duke it out with their friends. Even if there were some problems in the game balance. Looking at you, Steve, with your nonsense infinite stun combo. In addition to tweaking the balance, Dark Resurrection came with more bells and whistles to justify a second purchase. <laughs> Firstly, you had three new fighters, Dragunov, Armor King 2, and everyone's favorite French tea enthusiast, Lily. Secondly, it came with a handful of new game modes like Ghost Battles, Gold Rush, and Tekken Bowl. Our only gripe is how some stages got visual changes and different songs from the PS2 version. Even so, Dark Resurrection was one of the greatest titles to ever grace our PlayStation Portables. Okay. 
Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. I'm ready, boss. Peace Walker was one of those games that was so tremendous in quality that it's a crying shame how little it sold at launch. And we have to wonder why. After all, this was one of the best looking games the PlayStation Portable ever saw in its lifespan. Supposedly the house is being used to hold prisoners, and it's fitted with blue doors. On top of that, you had MGS fans raving about how this was the best story in the entire franchise. Then, there were the folks who were simply losing their minds over the crossover with Monster Hunter. So what the hell? Why didn't this sell like hotcakes? Some say it's because of the Nintendo DS's popularity, which was trumping over the PSP. Others say it was because the PSP was just old news. At the end of the day, it's a mystery to everyone, and you should go play it for yourself. Wait! Snake? I'll do it for the girl. Dissidia 012 Final Fantasy. Wait, so you fought one of your allies? Why? I felt like it. What the hell title is that? Yes, we do have Dissidia Final Fantasy NT on PlayStation 4 and PC, but there are two problems with it. One, microtransactions. There's a ton of them, and it sucks. And two, support has ceased as of 2020, so there's no more new content, no more nothing, it is what it is. The original Dissidia remained supreme in the series for the simple fact that it didn't hold content hostage. On top of that, it was truly a unique take on a Final Fantasy fighting game, combining the format of arena fighters with RPG elements. But what has us crawling back to Dissidia 012? Well, we'll keep it short here. It's the expanded roster of characters. That That's really what we love about this game more than the original. Plus, Tifa isn't trapped behind a paywall. So there's that. Do we look like sidesteppers? Your little game ends here, kids! What, are you crazy? Loco Roco. If you're ever feeling down, might we prescribe to you a few cc's of Loco Roco? This tilt and tumble title was just constant cuteness wrapped up in a digital bundle of joy. Roll your Loco Roco around and grow or shrink to navigate the level and rescue all of your fellow companions. Between its bright colors and upbeat score, it's simply impossible to have a bad time when playing this classic. And the best part, all three games in the franchise, the remasters of the original Loco Roco, Loco Roco 2, and a port of Loco Roco Midnight Carnival, are all currently available to download on PlayStation 4 and 5. You should go and, and give these games a try. It's pure joy, man. Pure joy. Resistance Retribution. Oh, how we long for the day Resistance returns so that Sony can quit acting like Call of Duty is the be-all, end-all of FPS games. If we're not getting ports, remasters, or remakes of the original Resistance games, can we at the very least get Retribution? Sure, it's the black sheep of the franchise with its third-person camera, but it presented a different kind of experience compared to the explosive PS3 games. The health system made it feel a bit more arcadey, the cover system was streamlined a bit by removing the lack of requiring an input, and the multiplayer was just as fun as the main games. Also, big shout out to the checkpoint system, that's one overlooked thing with design these days. This is one of those rare cases where the checkpoint system makes the pacing perfect. Star Wars Lethal Alliance <laughs> Most would flock to the PSP Battlefront games, Elite Squadron and Rogue Squadron, they're, they're pretty good, but we'd take Lethal Alliance for variety's sake. In all honesty, Lethal Alliance did not get as much love as it should have. Some might scoff at the idea of a Star Wars game that doesn't give you a lightsaber, but what it does without it is surprisingly fun and unique. Those familiar with the Kyle Katarn games or Star Wars Bounty Hunter will enjoy the basic shooting mechanics and unique story about a Twi'lek mercenary hired to help bring down the Empire. Perhaps the LucasArts of today will revisit the story by hiring a studio to remake it, or at the very least, remaster it or port it over to modern hardware. Fat Princess Fistful of Cake
While this was simply a handheld port of the PS3 game Fat Princess, Fistful of Cake is more or less the superior version of the game, even if there were some visual sacrifices. For starters, Fistful of Cake offers up four new modes to the already addictive multiplayer in the form of Demolition, Jailbreak, Dilapidation, and Grim Reaper. These same modes would help expand the single player campaign as well as six exclusive maps. This port alone is why we would love to see one of the many Sony live service games supposedly being developed become Fat Princess. It, it would just work as a free to play game so long as you keep it tried and true to Fat Princess and not that dumb top down hack and slash Fat Princess adventures that was horrible and it wasn't Fat Princess. Pinball Heroes. This is gonna hurt me more than it hurts you. If you haven't heard of Pinball Heroes, we don't blame you, as this was a game you could only download through the PSP's PlayStation Store. Developed by Sony San Diego Studio, the studio behind MLB The Show, Pinball Heroes was a collection of pinball tables based on various PlayStation titles, including Fat Princess, Uncharted, Pain, Mod Nation Racers, High Velocity Bowling, Hot Shots Golf, Wipeout, and Motorstorm. Each table was crafted with a clear understanding of how each game played, featuring different mechanics and events that truly captured the spirit of each IP. If you want to experience this classic for yourself, it is available for 10 bucks on PlayStation Store and includes both PS4 and PS5 ports. Pinball Heroes, unsung hero of the PSP, honestly, deserves way more love than it got. Patapon series. Speaking of PSP classics ported to modern hardware, the Patapon games have somewhat made their way to modern consoles. This trilogy of games task you with commanding a tribe of creatures, the Patapon, and help them survive an unforgiving world of ghastly creatures and environments. Simply input one of a few commands to the beat of their rhythm. It does get hectic between matching their beat to give commands and trying to keep them alive in general. And while you can play the first two games on PS4, Patapon 3 is sadly stranded on the PSP for some reason. Let's hope we can get that fixed in the near future and show everybody why Patapon is so great. God of War Ghost of Sparta. The first God of War PSP game, Chains of Olympus, was a promising start to Kratos' life on Sony's handheld, but between the two, Ghost of Sparta is the favorite among fans. The way it expands on the lore and Kratos' story is just excellent. And while the supposed lack of innovation was railed on by critics, we have to ask, what exactly was there to innovate on, when the combat is already solid and it still holds up? It's God of War! As long as the combat rocks and tells a fantastic story, that's all we need. Ghost of Sparta rocks, okay? The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. Internet, we need to have a quick little powwow, all right? I'm going completely off script here. Why does no one talk about Legend of Heroes? Why? I need someone to answer that to me right now because I have been playing Trails in the Sky I'm having a blast, and the fact that this franchise is constantly not getting a spotlight, why? It, it's, it's been a ride for me, man. It has. The way that this game builds its world, the way it writes its characters, the way it keeps amping up the stakes, I'm, I'm infatuated, man. Go and get Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, alright? Or get any of the other ones. You want to talk about one of the most underrated JRPGs today? This is it, right here. Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky. Our final entry, Daxter. Just give me the bug juice, Pops, and make it a double. Daxter is perhaps the poster child of stranded PSP games, as it is one of the very, very few Sony first-party games to never be ported forward, backward, diagonal, slanted, anywhere. Taking place prior to the events of Jack 2, Daxter focuses on the Otzel and his time as an exterminator in Haven City. What follows is a brilliant action platformer featuring hilarious writing, tight combat, and an assortment of insanely fun 
dream sequences. We have all four of the PS2 Jack and Daxter games available on PS4. Why is Daxter left out in the cold? For your first job, I want you to go and take out all the loose bugs in the local hotel. What's your favorite game you played on the PSP? Mine has been Daxter lately. I love Pawn, I love Pinball Heroes, but Daxter truly is great. You should go check it out on PS4 and PS5 if you haven't already. But did your favorite PSP game make our list? Let us know down in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.